order. You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man. Lord Janner is dead. He died last month at the age of 87. He'd had dementia. Before his death, people had come forward to accuse him of child sex abuse, something he had denied and which his family continue to deny. Plans for a trial of the facts have been scrapped. Now a BBC investigation has heard from 12 former residents of children's homes who say they were abused by Lord Janner. Our Home Affairs correspondent Tom Simons can tell us more. Well, Eddie, when Lord Janner died of Alzheimer's disease just after Christmas, the course of this saga was set. This year, nine men were due to stand up in court and accuse him of sexually abusing them. But you can't have a trial without a defendant. The law doesn't allow it. So today's hearing brought that to an end. Now, I'll come back in a minute to what happens next. But with no criminal proceedings, we are now able to discuss the nature of the evidence against Lord Janner. Nine would have been invo involved in this trial, but 20 men and one woman, we understand, and are discussing their cases with lawyers. One of them is Mark. He's in his 50s, and he told me that Greville Janner, as he was then, uh, was a member of the Magic Circle when he came to his children's home. He used to do magic tricks, and when it finished, he took a group of us who wanted to go to the bathroom, wash, help us wash, help us undress. It was individually he took us. Undressing a child and washing a child is like, it's abuse, basically, and obviously it was touchy-feely kind of stuff. His hands were on you and you yes. were naked? Yes, yes. And you were how old? Um, about 11, 12. The police made inquiries to try and find me, and they took a statement in 91, 2002, 2007. Three statements? Basically, yes. The police basically have admitted they should have took it further. My story is completely true. Well, last year we spent many weeks investigating the Janna case. We traced dozens of former care home residents and staff at children's homes across Leicester. And at least eight told us they had seen Greville Janna, the MP, visiting. Often he was in the company of a man named Frank Beck, who was later to be convicted and jailed for life for serious child cru cruelty and sexual abuse. Now, these former Children's Homes residents talked of Beck waltzing around, as one of them put it, with visitors, including Greville Janner. This woman asked us not to identify her. Well, different visitors, I suppose. Social workers, Frank's friends, just you know, people who just walk around the home with him and... But what, what do you know about who Frank's friends were? Well, I know Greville Janner was one of them, definitely. I used to see him just walk round, you know, just, you're all right, speak to you, nothing too heavy, if you know what I mean. But definitely there. How often? Quite a lot. Two, three, four times a week. A week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So quite a lot. How can you be sure who that man was? Because when I was 14, 15, I saw him in the papers, leaflets. And a social worker we spoke to said that the MP was there so often, he thought that Janna, uh, Greville Janna and Frank Beck were having weekly meetings. Now, during our investigation, we also spoke to many ex-police officers, including a former detective, Graham Peen, who way back in the 70s remembers reporting Frank Beck for inappropriately touching a boy. But he told us later he had to go back to Beck's office to return a runaway child. As I walked in, I sat in an armchair, was Greville Janner. Next to, next to Greville Janner was this young boy. I thought that was a bit, a bit strange. What's an MP doing there? And what's a boy doing sitting on the arm of the chair? And he's actually been ta too tactile with a young boy who was obviously in the care of the local authority. And therefore, it's something that I felt that ought to be reported. So you've effectively reported, and what was done about that? Well, I never heard anything more about it. 
Now, our research suggests that at least 12 alleged victims of Greville Janna were residents in children's homes. When Frank Beck was being prosecuted for his crimes in 1991, he actually accused Greville Janna of being the abuser and the MP denied it in the Commons. Police were aware of some allegations against Greville Janna, but he wasn't arrested. In fact, some accused the children's home kids of making up stories for compensation money. Now, in the early 2000s and then in 2006, there were decisions taken not to press charges against Greville Janna, but some of the alleged victims, including Mark, we heard uh, from there, made complaints each time. And in this decade, more alleged victims have come forward. But by that point, Lord Janna had developed Alzheimer's disease and it was too late. Lord MacDonald ran the Crown Prosecution Service during some of all of this and he told World at One that mistakes were made. It highlights the really abysmal performance of the criminal justice system in this case over a number of years, including, of course, during the time when I was uh, DPP between 2003 and 2008. It appears that numerous opportunities were lost. Unfortunately, contrary to the rules at the time, this case was never brought to me personally, so I wasn't uh, aware of it. But it's obviously a matter of huge regret that uh, he wasn't prosecuted earlier, and he should have been. And why that happened is now being investigated by the CPS, the police and the Independent Police Complaints Commission. But what of getting to the truth of the Janna allegations themselves? Well, with no trial, that will now be the task of the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse. And that is not a trial. It can't find Lord Janna guilty, but it can establish the facts of the case. And it can examine the roles of the police, the council, the care homes involved. And interestingly, it says the Labour Party. Now, we do expect the alleged victims to give their accounts, and that will happen this year. In fact, there's a preliminary hearing that's just been announced for early March. And with the criminal proceedings over, some, if not all, of those 21 alleged victims are now discussing with their solicitors suing Lord Janna's estate and Leicestershire County Council for damages, Eddie. Tom Simons reporting. When she was an MP, Tessa Munt was among those calling for a national inquiry into historical child sex abuse allegations. Uh, What do you make of all this today, Tessa Munt? Well, I think the best news that we've heard today is that actually Lowell Goddard's inquiry, the independent inquiry for which we all called, seven of us called, um, is going to pick up the Janna inquiry as a separate strand. Now, what it's done is it, um, Grev, um, Lowell Goddard has actually decided to have her investigation, her independent inquiry, in 12 different strands. And one of those strands is sort of entitled Westminster. But they're actually going to deal with the Janna thing as an early hearing, and that starts on the 9th of March, which is brilliant. But what that will do is make sure that the victims... Um, their allegations are heard, that they are believed, and that some of that disappointment and extreme anger they must be feeling um, will be dissipated because they will be heard and it will be noted. They have their opportunity to tell what's happened and they've asked so many of them for this and to get some sort of justice and perhaps some sort of closure. So I think that's one good thing. And what will come of that is, you know, I'm utterly confident and looking at the way things have progressed so far, Lowell Goddard will give her findings of fact based on the evidence that she hears um, about institutional failure. And so the failure of duty for the CPS in its investigations, for the Leicester local authorities, the police, the Labour Party, whomever, and to make an assessment of whether um, Lord Janner, when he was an MP, Greville Janner, as a powerful man, whether he had greater access because of his position and was less accountable because of his position. And those are the things that we absolutely have to make sure never, never happen again. How can those proceedings that you've outlined be fair to Lord Janna and to his family? Well, I'm actually terribly surprised that the Janna family spends its time protesting his innocence and denying these allegations because no one is in a position to make that protest or to deny that that those allegations except Lord Janner unless they can assure everybody that Lord Janner was accompanied by members of the family who protest his in- innocence 24 hours a day for the great number of years for which he was, quote, a p- powerful person. It's not possible to protest innocence on someone else's behalf. So they need to get that straight for a start. But actually, you know, of course, 
they will want to have some sort of um, view about all of this. And they, they, but the, the reality is, these allegations are out there. There are 21 adults who are uh, represented by solicitors, let alone others, no doubt, who are not yet represented. And those people must be heard. You know, we've had years and years, there's 25 years worth of people making reports about this gentleman. And frankly, this needs to be dealt with and it needs to be sorted out. And, you know, I'm very sorry for the Janna family, but they're not responsible for his behaviour. He, as a potential per perpetrator of child sexual abuse, is responsible, was responsible for his own actions. No one else is right. responsible for those actions. But there are bodies who might look to themselves about what they should have done in advance of this year. We you know over these 25 years they've had consistent and repeated reports of things that this man had done they should perhaps have dealt with them sooner and right. that is what will come out of Lowell Goddard's inquiry I'm sure. Thank you Tessa Munt. <laughs>